Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. We have a, had a little bit of a problem with this game, to be honest with you. It's a bit of a shame, but uh, it appears that um, somewhere around the time where this this game actually refused to load, when I had to go back to an earlier save and play through again, something happened. Now, it might have been my mistake, it might have been a bug, and to be honest with you, I don't really know at this point, but it appears that we've gone on to a different track. Which is a bit ironic, seeing there's a train in the background. I've just noticed that. But uh, that means that we're probably not going to get the ending we all thought we were going to get. We're going to get the Semyon ending instead. But uh, as I wanted to do all of the endings, I don't think it really matters. So anyway, on with the game. Last episode, we decided once again to try to skive off and go to the beach. Unfortunately, everybody's favourite camp commandant was there. As soon as I thought that coming here might not have been the best idea, she noticed me. Eh, hey, Samyon. Good lord, how does she keep those in there? You weren't at the lineup, and in general, you are just lounging around all day. I did not know how to answer. For some reason, I was distracted. And just are you. How are you planning on becoming a proper pioneer? She continued more softly. Olga, in the camp, is there a pioneer who looks a lot like me? She looks surprised. Maybe, I don't know. Why do you ask? Oh, I'm just curious. Well, we have a lot of boys here. Alright, never mind. Someone's yell came from the riverside and Olga rushed in its direction. Well, looks like I'll be spared a lecture. I lowered myself onto the sand and stared at the pioneers playing in the water. After a few minutes of sitting there, Yelana approached me. Why so sad? I'm not sad. Well, why are you sitting here all alone? Just thinking. About what? I decided to spare her my story about the mysterious pioneer. Well, imagine you're chatting with a weird person. And you have to figure out what exactly is so weird about them. Simple. I would just ask them. She laughed. Too simple. But he won't answer. How do you know? Have you tried asking? No, but it's obvious. Yelana did not answer, just sat down next to me and let out a tired sigh. I'm all swimmed out. And what if they know something but won't tell you? Make them. But how? For a bit longer we sat together talking about random things and then I got up, said goodbye, and went on my way. It's time to find the mysterious stranger and get all the answers. The first place to visit was the bus stop. After all, this is where it all began. The road was empty, as always. Only small dust tornadoes were occasionally visible on it. I was ready to turn around and go back to camp, but then I heard someone whisper. Don't trust him. Someone was hiding behind the monument. A pioneer was sitting there with his back to me. And once again, the voice seemed strangely familiar. Who are you? I took a few steps towards him. Stop! Don't come any closer! For some reason, I froze in my tracks. From somewhere deep inside, an assurance came to me, and I understood that I shouldn't argue with him. All right, I'll stay here. Have you seen him? Talk to him? He asked nervously. Who are you even talking about? He was dressed in a pioneer uniform. You know who. And I definitely did know. He was talking about the weird pioneer I saw earlier. Yes, I answered after a few seconds of silence. 
What did he tell you? The pioneer asked in a pleading tone. Nothing, really. Did he give you advice? Did he tell you what to do? Threaten you? No, nothing like that. Of course, he seemed pretty weird, but nothing more than that. Remember, he may not be alone, or more likely, he is alone, but you may meet many pioneers here who look like him. And what about you? Who are you? Who are you hiding from? You will understand, in time. Just remember, the most important thing here is to find the exit. All of a sudden a gust of wind came through, ripping leaves from the trees and throwing an old paper bag into my face. Shielding myself, I averted my eyes. When I looked back at the pioneer, the pioneer was already gone. At that moment I was overwhelmed by fear. Real, almost tangible fear. I remember being scared during my first hours at this camp, but back then everything around me seemed kind and friendly. Now Sovyanok revealed its fangs, getting ready to eat me. And ahead, the unknown. My body was covered in goosebumps, my throat was dry, and my hands were shaking. I tried to ignore it all and headed back to the camp. It was already dinner time, but I had no desire to go to the canteen. After meeting the second mysterious pioneer, just thinking about the locals made me, if not afraid, then at least creeped out. I didn't even know who or what they all are. And even though I had not, uh, uh, and even though nothing had happened yet, it does not mean I can trust them. I stopped in front of the clubhouse, but then realized that this is not the best spot to be at. I could run into someone, which was not something I wanted to do at the moment. Almost running, I turned towards the forest and walked a few meters along the path before finally stopping. On one side, the mysterious pioneer. Well, two of them to be precise. On the other, all the other inhabitants of this camp who seemed absolutely normal. Well, possibly except for Yana and Olga and Alyssa. Uh, oh, let's move on. Either way, my decision to stand back and let everything resolve itself was under some serious pressure. At this point, it was clear to me I had to do something on my own. But what is that? Everyone is probably having a dinner, so I have a good chance to make it to Olga's place without being noticed. I decided to first take my clothes that I wore when I arrived here along with my cell phone. I won't be able to come up with a solid plan right off the bat, so for the time being I might as well hide in the forest. I leapt up the steps and entered the building. My clothes were right where I left them and my phone was where it was supposed to be, under my pillow. I quickly grabbed it and was ready to stuff it in my pocket, but then I noticed something on the screen. The message window was open. The text read, You're wrong, Semyon. You are so wrong. I felt like my soul had left my body. I froze on the spot. I was shaking and my blood was pumping so hard it felt like my skull was going to burst open from the pressure. It took at least a full minute for me to come back to my senses. Olga couldn't have typed in the message. Or one of the pioneers. It's easy to figure out how to do it, even if they're not familiar with this technology. But no one besides me should know where I kept the phone. This event was the straw that broke the camel's back. I rushed out of the house, determined to never come back here. Night fell on the campgrounds. I had been sitting in the woods for a few hours, trembling at every noise. The spot that I chose was far enough away from the path, so I would it would not be hard. Mm. <laughs> the spot that I chose was far away from the path, so it would be hard to find me. I was keeping a few plans in my head for the time being, to try and run, to kill every single person in the camp. However, on the other hand, 
One thought had chased me and I realised that I shouldn't behave like this because of some strange pioneer, or even because of that message on the phone. All of that was reinforcing the thought that everything happening here was far from normal. However, there was no proof that anyone in the camp had anything to do with it. I could have stayed here until morning, lost in my own thoughts, but I heard footsteps coming from somewhere nearby. So, you decided to escape, after all. I turned around, but couldn't see the pioneer's face in the dark. Nevertheless, I was pretty sure it was him. I wasn't afraid then. More precisely, I was so physically exhausted that I was prepared for any possible course of events and somehow managed to reason appropriately and to maintain the conversation. I wouldn't call this an escape, I answered slowly, stretching every word. Huh? What is it then? A tactical retreat? Brilliant! He burst into laughter. Listen, why don't you tell me what's going on? Who are you and what do you want from me? What did that guy tell you at the gate? It seemed that he didn't even hear my question. He told me not to trust you, I lied. But on the other hand, I thought that was... that it was what he meant. Well, that's always the way for him, running away, hiding. I could hear irritation in his voice. I'm not sure what side of circus you're running here, but I'm not going to be a part of it. Oh, why not? You're the star, after all. I couldn't see his face, but I bet he was smiling. Explain my part to me then. You know, I was like you in the beginning. The first time everything went peacefully. Then I escaped, tried to understand what was going on, got mad and even tortured them to get the truth. He laughed crazily. I shivered. But it was pointless continued the pioneer after calming down a bit. Pointless! And then I began to notice the lapses. At first, I just heard their voices, coming from a distance, and sometimes in my head. Then vague silhouettes appeared. Then they slowly took on physical form. And finally, they stepped into my world. I could touch them, introduce them to other pioneers. And they were all different. Different? Do you get it? Different! He started shouting. And it occurred again and again. You can get used to the loops, but... Then I learned how to get into their words by myself. To interact with the others. But it turned out that I'm not alone. There are lots of us. Today, you saw at least one more. He fell silent. I don't know what questions to ask, and I didn't want to interrupt his story, so I simply waited. After a minute, he continued. It's not that simple, of course, and it's not always possible. Only under certain circumstances, when you feel strong emotions, for example. I instantly remembered how I saw him the first time, the time when I didn't want to feel any emotions at all. Including your moments when you feel happy. As if he was reading my thoughts. I see. So you're trying to tell me, so you're trying to say that there are several parallel worlds, including the same camp with its inhabitants, where I am replaced by you or that guy I met at the bus stop? Yeah, something like that. His answer didn't surprise me at all. In the end, it's clear that whatever happens here is beyond the limits of human understanding, and this theory didn't even seem all that unusual. But you said that everything recurs. Yes, it recurs. And what will happen afterwards? You'll start from the very beginning. You'll wake up on the bus, come to the camp, meet Olga, the girls, electronic. But if it happened to you, then why should it happen to me as well? It happens to everyone. Once again, he laughed hysterically. And how many loops have you experienced so far? I stopped counting them already. At first, I tried to remember them, though. Maybe a few hundred? No wonder. It was very clear to me that this guy was suffering from a progressing mental dysfunction. 
But you searched for a way out, didn't you? He didn't answer. That's what that guy at the bus stop was talking about. Because he understands nothing, damn it! He shouted. Because he's just like you, constantly running away, hiding! What would you suggest then? If I had any suggestions, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you. All right. But you were trying, weren't you? Uh, are you trying to understand what I know since I've been around here for a long time? He asked cheerfully. Well, that's evident. Yes, I did run try to run away from here. There. He pointed towards the forest. Is nothing there. Nothing but trees. When I'd been walking here, there for several days and finally passed out, I found myself in the bus again. Same for walking along the road. It's endless. Talking to somebody about it is pointless. You've probably already understood that by yourself. I did. I interjected. Even if you try to explain your situation directly, at best, you'll just be considered an idiot. What if you try not to leave the bus? It's pointless. Sooner or later you'll be found. I even tried to spend the entire time there. In the end I fell asleep and everything started from the beginning. And what if you start by, by yourself and leave? No keys. And I don't have any carjacking skills. A cursed cycle. Exactly. A long silence fell. Finally, I asked, And what about the people around here? Don't they raise absolutely reasonable suspicions? Suspicions? Laughter again. The only thing that is suspicious about them is no matter how much you tell them, they stare at you with their eyes out on stalks. The people? I feared them at first, too. Then I used them for different experiments. And now I don't consider them humans. They're all dolls, puppets. You can easily predict any reaction, any word or action. So, they aren't worth fearing, are they? The one worth fearing is yourself, he said softly. Do you know how funny it is when the human bones crack as they slowly break from distension? Looks like he's finally lost his marbles. Listen, I understand everything, but... The other one thinks that it is a bit much, too. But it doesn't matter. Nobody but you is real here. The pioneer suddenly fell silent. Well, no, I don't agree with you. You're probably thinking, why didn't, why I didn't check this all by myself, aren't you? Why I didn't try to reach the nearest village or town? Yes, I did have such thoughts. Why wasn't I suspicious? Why was I doing different stuff instead of searching for answers? Well, yes. Forget about it. That's normal. We all behave like that for the first time here. But how many others have you seen so far? Not that many. The pioneer was lost in thought. About ten people, maybe. But I'm sure there are many more than them. And? Is everyone like this? In fact, yes. Only the details are different, but the main thing is invariable. There is no way out of here. And, by the way, you're just like the majority of them. The only thing that differs is that you've heard everything from me instead of experiencing it yourself. I don't know if I should thank him for that. Well, and what now? Nothing he said shortly. I closed my eyes and lost myself in thought. That was a critical mistake. When I opened my eyes, I didn't see anybody, just like the previous times. So it's clear what's going on now, but in fact, how could everything be... <clears throat> but in fact, how could everything he said guide me to an answer? Yes, I'm not alone, yes, everything recurs, but what's the reason for all this? And what is more important, where's the way out? The only useful thing that I extracted from the conversation was that the local inhabitants were not worth fearing, not even Yulana, and that was quite significant to me for now, since it, it, it was much better to sleep in a warm cabin instead of the forest. 
I sighed, took my things and headed towards the camp. As I was walking, the conversation with my fellow sufferer popped up in my head every now and again. Why did I not ask you about the message on my phone and some other stuff? There were hints, after all. Maybe if I found some details out, I could have drawn some conclusions. However, it did seem that I, our meeting would be the last one. The lights were on in Olga's cabin. I opened my, the door gently and went in. Speak of the devil, here you are, the camp leader said angrily. Olga, I'm so tired now, so let's put off the lecture. Tired from what, I wonder? From everything, I snapped rudely. The camp leader looked at me with surprise. I fell into bed without undressing. Samian! A role model pioneer shouldn't behave like that. And how should he behave then? Well, not like that. The camp leader stumbled for a moment as if struggling to pick the right words. He should respect his seniors. I respect you immensely for sure. Samian. The sarcasm of my voice didn't go unnoticed. And now I'd like to sleep. Wait, I... By the way, how far is the nearest town? When does the bus arrive? How can I even get out of here? I asked in a surprisingly calm voice. There was no answer, and there shouldn't have been any. I said all this just in order to get rid of her. Why are you silent? I'm tired. Let's talk about that tomorrow. The camp leader got up and turned off the lights. Yes, it's all just like the guy said. Why did I speak to him so calmly and properly, I wonder? I should have been shivering from horror. That pioneer didn't have much credibility, but I had a feeling that he's unable to harm me. As soon as I thought that would be a good idea to ask someone else, fatigue overtook me and I passed out. Okay, day seven. I think we will leave it there. And uh, pick this up. I think the next episode, there's a fairly good chance the next episode of the one after it is going to be the end of this particular run through. But if you guys like it, if you want it, I will go and do all the other endings through this. Including, there's a couple of special endings you only get after a few runs through. So until then... I've been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. Thank you. And good night.